I had three batteries here, I've now got two. Right. They're one there was three of them. Yeah. Got one, other two's gone off this way, and I'm right. a battery missing. Right, you've heard what the gentleman's had to say, haven't you? Yeah. Right, I'm now gonna arrest you on suspicion of theft. You understand that? You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you're not mentioned when questions are being later on in court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. Do you understand that? Yeah. Right, I'm gonna cuff you, okay? Put your hands out and come for me. Right, we're going to go to the police station where we're going to interview you in relation to this matter. Alright, how old are you? 16. Right, we're going to get your parents to come down or another adult to come down and sit in with you. Alright? Right, come with me. Can you do a search of you anyway? Alright? You've got a phone in that pocket, have you? Okay, anything else on you that I need to know about? Right, okay, just hold on one second. Hi Sarge, I've arrested uh, this young man on suspicion of uh, theft from a backyard this morning. Um, I was on patrol on Lancaster Park Road when I heard a member of the public shouting. Um, this young male came running towards me. Uh, I stopped him to find out what was going on, walked back to the uh, gentleman concerned and he informed me that this young man and two others were responsible for attempting to steal car batteries from his uh, rear uh, yard. Um, having listened to what he said, I've arrested uh, John on suspicion of theft of those batteries and have brought him in today um, to question him uh, regarding those matters um, for a prompt and effective investigation. There are other youths outstanding and I intend to do a search of his home address. Okay, thank you. Do you understand the reason for your arrest? Uh, yes. Okay. I'm going to authorise your detention here at the police station in order to secure and preserve evidence and to obtain evidence by way of questioning. Okay. okay. Uh, do you wish me to search him? Yes, please. Yeah. And your first name? John. And your date of birth, please? 290896. Okay. And how old are you, please? 16. Okay. Can you just keep that machine, please, John? While you're at the police station, you're going to need an appropriate adult. Is there somebody at home who could act as that? that? Mum and Dad or...? Uh, yeah, my mum. Okay. Will they be at home at the moment? Yes. Okay. We'll look after your phone while you're here. You say you need your glasses? Yeah. Gentleman's got a cord on his... Uh... Yeah, we'll take your top off you and give an alternative top to wear while you're here. Right. Just leave that there, yeah, we'll put that in with the rest of your stuff. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you. you put your shoes back on. Okay. While you're here at the police station, you have certain rights and entitlements. They're set out on these two bits of paper. We'll go through this again when the appropriate adult's present, but I'll give them for now, okay? They're yours to keep. Okay. Now, while you're here, you can speak to an independent solicitor free of charge by phone or in person. You can have somebody informed that you've been arrested and that you're here at the police station, that's free as well. I'll obviously be telling the appropriate adult you can have somebody else informed if you need them. I could also have a look at a book called The Codes of Practice, which covers police powers and procedures. That's a law book, tells the police the powers we have, the rights you have, and how we have to treat people that have been arrested, okay? 
Now you can do any of those things now. If you don't want to do them now, you can do them at any time while you're here because they're ongoing rights. Okay. So at the moment, would you like to speak to a solicitor? Uh, no, no, I'll wait till one gets here. Okay. Would you like anybody else informed that you've been arrested? Uh, no. Okay. But we'll show you to a room for now while we contact you, your mum and while our investigation is ongoing. If you need anything, just ask. Okay. Uh, you can take him to cell number eight. Please, just follow me. Okay. I'm going to have to put you in this cell till the mother arrives. All right? You just take your shoes off, all. You're not allowed to go in there. Just put them on the outside, please. Thank you. Got a light in there. If you look there, we've got uh, a buzzer for you to call. We've got a sink. We've got a toilet for you to use, all right? I hope it's not going to take long, but as soon as your mum gets down here, we'll interview you and we'll get this sorted out, all right? In the meantime, just go in there, take your seat. Rights in time, yes. Sat down those two bits of paper which I offered him, and I told him he could speak to an independent solicitor free of charge at any time while he was here. He could also have somebody informed that he'd been arrested and he was here at the police station other than yourself. And he could have a look at a book called The Codes of Practice, which covers police powers and procedures, which basically all what tells the police the powers we have, the rights you have, and how we have to treat people who have been arrested. Uh, at that time, he didn't want a solicitor, he didn't want anybody else telling him he was here other than himself, and he didn't want to have a look at the Codes of Practice. Are you in agreement with that? Well, I don't know what's gone on yet, but yeah, sounds okay. all right. But well, you can change your mind at any time, okay? Okay. So Are what else gone on then? Well, I'm going to interview um, John now, so, uh, and I want you in on that interview, okay? Yeah. Um, we're, the custody sergeant's happy, we'll... I just, uh, we'll I just need to ask if you acted as an appropriate adult before. I don't even know what that is. Well, this piece of paper here tells you about your role here and your responsibilities. I'll draw your attention to the uh, four points there that are marked with the arrow. You're here basically to support and advise your son, particularly when he's being questioned by the police. So has he been arrested then? He has been arrested, yes. You're here to observe when the police are acting correctly and fairly and dealing with when you think we're not, tell us immediately. You're also here to assist in communication between your son and ourselves and also to ensure that his rights are protected, which we've just done there by you being present when we're giving his rights. Okay? If you have any questions about your role, just ask me. Well, what's he supposed to have done anyway? Uh, I'll explain that. I'll explain that all to you. Okay? Do you have that for now? Are we ready to go? Yeah. Right, John, you've just seen me remove the seal on the discs and place them in the DVD recorder, is that correct? Yes. This interview is being audibly recorded and may be tendered in evidence if your case is brought before a court. We're in an interview room at Harrogate Police Station. I'm PC 1781 Andy Collinson, uh, attached to the Harrogate Police Station. At the end of the interview, I'll give you a notice explaining what will happen to the discs and how you can obtain access to them. Do you understand that? Yes. Can you please state your full name and date of birth? John Doe, 29th of August, 96. Also present is, can you give me your full name, please? I'm Enid Doe. And your mum to, to John, is that correct? Yeah. Can I just advise you, Enid, that you are not here to act as an observer. You should advise John and you should observe whether or not the interview is being conducted properly and fairly. You should also assist in communication with John. Do you understand that? Yeah. John, you're not represented by a solicitor at this interview. You are reminded that you have a, uh, a right to free and independent legal advice. You can speak to a solicitor in private at any time of day or night, and this advice is free. You can speak to a solicitor in person. If you do not want to speak to a solicitor in person, then you can speak to one on the telephone. If you do want legal advice, then the interview uh, can be delayed. If you do not know a solicitor, or you cannot contact your own solicitor, then you can ask to see the duty solicitor, or see a list of local solicitors. Do you wish to speak to a solicitor at this time? No. Is there any reason you don't want to speak to a solicitor at this time? No. If at any time uh, during this interview you feel that you do need the uh, advice of a solicitor, let me know, we'll stop the interview and we'll arrange that for you. Do you both understand that? Yeah. Do you understand that? Fine. At the end of the interview, I'll, as I said before, I'll give you a note explaining what will happen to these tapes. Before I start to interview you, I must caution you again. 
You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? Yes. Tell me what that caution means to you. Uh, anything I say will be like recorded for further notice, and then if I don't say anything, then the courts will be... I don't know. Basically, the first part of it says you do not have to say anything. Right. OK, I'm still going to interview you. I'm still going to ask you the questions, but it's your right that you don't have to answer my questions. Right. OK. However, it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. So if, I, if you go to court, if this goes that far, and you haven't mentioned something in this interview, the court might take an inference. That means they might think, why haven't you told the police officer that at the time? Right. Do you understand that? Yeah. And anything you do say may be given in evidence. That means that I will make a, a written record of this interview and present it in my report. Right. Okay, do you understand that? Yes. Right, I'm going to start uh, the interview now. You're arrested um, this morning um, on suspicion of theft of batteries. What? The worst case scenario um, for any person in custody having been interviewed would be charged to court. Um, depending how serious the offence was, that person could be um, remanded in custody, that means in a police cell overnight, waiting for court the next day. Potentially, if you're arrested on a Friday, you might be in a police cell until Monday morning um, for the next court uh, sitting. Um, that is very rare, but it does happen, and it does happen with uh, young offenders. Um, th there is quite a scale of, of how people are dealt with whilst they are in custody. Um, simple fact is that um, if somebody makes a, uh, an admission to a, uh, a, a simple offence, i.e. a shop theft, they can be dealt with by what's called a uh, community disposal, um, which is basically admitting to the, to the crime, um, uh, paying for any damages that may have been caused and possibly doing some reparation within the community. Uh, and that would be the end of the matter, signed off by both the offender and the victim. Um, Secondly, we have a youth caution. Uh, a youth caution uh, is recordable uh, and it is uh, something that is held on record. Uh, the young person, again, may have to do reparation within the community, may have to meet with the, um, uh, the victim of the crime and get involved in either writing or verbally apologising. The next stage up from a youth caution is a youth conditional caution where various conditions will be imposed on that young person. They will be um, overseen by uh, officers from the Youth Justice Service. And again, these could include um, courses uh, in relation to substance misuse, consequential thinking, uh, paying a fine, um, making a apologies and uh, doing reparation within the community. And that could either be directly to the victim of the crime or something within the community like working on an allotment, um, delivering leaflets, picking up litter. Um, the next stage up from the youth conditional caution would be a charge to court and where the court will decide the punishment uh, for any either young person or adult. In the case of John Doe, um, he has been through um, the system previously, which has resulted in a youth caution and a youth conditional caution. Subsequently, um, he has been charged with this offence to appear before the court where he will be dealt with by the magistrates uh, and they will decide what sanctions to impose on him um, uh, through, through the court procedures.